Anytime I mention grid in one of my videos, I get comments about how grid is either too complicated or how worse, in my opinion, people saying that, well, flex is good enough and I don't need grid. Well, my front end friends, if you're one of those grid is too complicated people, you're in the right place because grid can be simple. And if you're one of those flex is good enough people, you're also in the right place because not only can grid be simple to use, it can also be a lot simpler and easier to do certain things with it than even do some things that you can't really do with with Flexbox. And we're gonna be doing all of that starting with this simple example that we'll dive into some more complicated stuff as we go through this here. I have three columns with a display flex. That's what flex is good at, right? Throw a display flex, it makes columns for you. I'd argue you wanna use grid for this though, even if it's just three columns like this. And the reason for that is like, this sort of harks back a little bit, I guess, to the float based days, but often if you needed three columns and then you need another three columns, we're creating rows to create rows of content, uh, which back in the float based days, we sort of needed to do. And then with the advent of Flexbox, there were sort of better ways to approach this way uh, in a sense, but like this is very common. But then of course you might end up with a row with three and then a row with two, but you don't want those to stretch, but that's what Flexbox does. So then you'd have to come in and say that, well, these are actually like the call for, right? And this, this was such a common pattern for so long. And then you had your call for, and that had uh, a flex basis. And even like, what would the flex basis here be? Cause we have a problem. I have a gap here. And then you need to take that into account, but we're going to sort of round up a little bit or round down or whatever. Um, and there we go, except those don't actually line up now, <laughs> if you notice, um, just because of the way flex works with the shrinks and everything that's on there. So that sort of sucks. <laughs> um, but whatever, that sort of was the right idea to go in the right direction. You take into account your gap and then you can fix that inconsistency there. Uh, and this was a way that we did it for a long time. And then you go, well, you don't actually even need to do that, right? We could get rid of that. We could have a single row and just add the flex wrap on here. So I guess, yeah, we could do that. Flex wrap of wrap, uh, which is going to work. But then 33% is too big for my flex basis because once again, the gap is there. And now we have to like drop that to a smaller number. That's kind of awkward and weird. Um, I, they're probably a little bit too small now to fit in exactly, but I can't put a flex grow on these because if I put a flex grow, we end up back at the same problem we had before. Uh, and again, there's, there's ways of making this system work. There's I mean, bootstrap is the most famous example of this being really robust because it was created when we had float based layouts and then they readapted that and it works really well. But we could say that instead of having that, we could say that my row here is actually a display of grid. We could take off my flex wrap and we could just say how many columns we want grid template columns. And I could say it's repeat and I want three. So I do three columns, one FR, uh, and then I get three, right? And it, <laughs> it just works. Uh, and as much or as little content as I put in there, it's going to work because the parent is in control of the layout and the elements just fit into that layout and it just works and it's wonderful. <laughs> and it's so much easier uh, in my own opinion. And then you might say, well, there's an advantage to the flex one, which is if I have the amount of elements I put into there is how many columns I get, right? Uh, and yeah, you could do that. So if we go back to three here and we're gonna go back to a flex, let's just comment this line out, I guess, because we're gonna use it again. Uh, but we're gonna go back to this being a display flex. And again, if I have two columns, we have two columns, right? Uh, if I go back to three, I have three. If I go four, five, six, whatever I put in here, that's how many columns I get. And that can be convenient though we can run into some issues like this. And then often you have a media query on when that's not gonna be columns anymore and you're gonna change the flex direction. Well, we can do the same thing with grid uh, and still maintain the advantage that grid has, at least in my own opinion here, by just doing a display grid and then a, actually we don't need the template columns, we can come in with a grid auto flow of column. And then we get the exact same behavior that we just had with Flexbox, which is kind of nice. Again, because the parent is in control of what's happening. And you can just get a little bit more consistent layouts because of that, because with Flexbox, if you put padding on any of those elements, it's actually going to create different sized elements. I've talked about this in a previous video. So if you don't believe me, you can check out, there'll be a card popping up and I'll link it in the description. Uh, but I want to go to some other th stuff that I haven't talked so much about. Um, so one of them is people will talk about responsiveness as well. Uh, you can do that with grid. And of course, 
I'm not saying you should only use grid. This might not be the layout you want. Maybe you want nine and 10 to stretch across the bottom. If that's the case, then you should be using Flexbox instead of Grid. But if I need something that's a little bit more set up like I have here right now, well then just coming in and using a Grid Auto Fit with your Min Max on there is going to do the trick. And it just means that it works and it's responsive and it's great and it's very consistent. And I get a grid, very structured grid, which you know the name sort of implies there. And doing this type of layout with Flexbox that's responsive and it just works and I'm not doing everything through breakpoints and media queries is kind of tricky. And then spanning columns like I'm doing here, that's kind of tricky too, right? Here I'm just saying I have my uh, columns, three, one FR, I could have used the repeat syntax there, I guess. But then I just say a column has to span across two. It doesn't matter the size of these. I could even say this one's like 100 pixels and lock it in. And it's always going to span across two columns regardless of any sizing or anything else. So if we went back to the flex basis version and modifying that to take into account the span that I'm doing, that's kind of annoying to do because then you also have to account for the gaps and the spacing and everything else. And this is just so easy. And something that'd be really hard here would be if I said grid row span two, and I'm going across two that way. That's gonna, you know, if I wanna do that with Flexbox, I could, but I'd have a row probably set up for this. I need another row for all of those. And then I guess, Maybe this would be on its own and then those would be wrapped and there's sub rows or I don't know. <laughs> I, 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 maybe I'm overcomplicating it, but you definitely would want like a row here and here. And then, yeah, you need like all this nesting going on to easily be able to do this. And there's maybe other ways you could sort of finagle it or get it to work. Or you could just use grid and say grid row span two and it works, right? There's no extra nesting. There's no extra anything else. You just put your elements there and you tell them what to do and they do it. Uh, and then the other one that just makes life so easy is having overlapping content where you can do the same thing because we can span over multiple lines and stuff like that. So my H1, let's even make the font size here slightly bigger. Uh, font size 3 rem might be too big and wrap around. Um, but the idea here is it's so easy to create overlapping content with our grid rows and grid columns here that if you need this type of layout, if you're trying to do this with Flexbox, you're just probably positioning stuff or maybe using negative margins or doing some other stuff, which with a grid, I can just say that this goes from my column one to three and this one goes from my two to four. So there's an overlap between these because this goes to three, this starts at two. We can even turn on uh, our grid inspector here so we can see what that actually looks like where you can see that this middle row that's being created is shared by both of the elements along the way there and it creates overlapping content super easily. And if you do want to use positioning with position absolute, it actually works super well with grid as well. I'll put a, again a card to a video on that because if you absolute position something, you can tell it what cell or cells it's in and then position it within those cells instead of like the entire element. It's just really convenient and it opens up a whole bunch of new doors and things that are just so much easier to do. And if you're someone who's gonna say you never need overlapping content, uh, just go look on Dribbble or let's look at popular websites and I promise you, you're gonna find a lot of examples where there is tons of overlapping stuff. Uh, and then onto the another topic though that does come up a lot, which is browser support. We're in July of 2024 and people still on every video where I talk about Grid, and especially comparing it to Flexbox, will say, but Flexbox has better browser support. So I avoid Grid because of that. If that's you right now, I hope you're also not using gap in Flexbox, aspect ratio, custom properties, clamp, or any of the other math functions and stuff like that, because all of those have worse support than grid. And I realized this was just a really quick overview. I was just diving through and picking out little things that are easier. I didn't deep dive how to use grid. And if you're one of those people that said, well, this is kind of complicated. I didn't really get what was going on with it. I promise you grid can actually be really easy to get started with. And if you'd like to learn how I have a video that looks at the easy way to get started with grid. And that video is right here for your viewing pleasure. And with that, I would like to thank my enablers of awesome, Andrew, Philip, Simon, and Tim, as well as all my other patrons for their monthly support. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome.